We are live with another elite coach. Uh, live. It doesn't it doesn't really roll off the tongue that does it? We are live with an elite coach live. I need to, uh, yeah. I need to work on that one. I'm I'm not going to be Bruce Buffer's like understudy anytime soon. I, he's not feeling threatened watching this, is he? <laughs> no, it should be. We are elite coach live <laughs> right now. Let's give let's give it a whirl. I'll still trip over it. I'll say live coach elite next week or something <laughs> like that. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, mate, can, mate, it's a, it's been a week. Like, I feel like we did this yesterday. Yeah. Like, I felt no, we did no. the goal setting one yesterday, but it's it's been a week already. And what a week it's been. Mm. Um, uh, guys, before we started, I was just chatting to Brendan. We had a, a like, a meeting on, on Wednesday. And I was just saying, after it, I was just battered. Like, absolutely done in. And then when you think about what we discussed, it was like we... We discussed like six months worth of work in three hours. <laughs> yeah. So I was that tired, mentally drained and fatigued. I couldn't train. So I think there's something in that though, in a in terms of you can't go all out all the time if you're in a state of product development or working on the business. Training sometimes gonna have to take a back seat. And likewise, if you're trying to train really hard elsewhere is going to have to take a back seat as well i think there's a there's a lesson in me being that tired or i just need to toughen up i don't know what what do you reckon brendan what do you reckon yeah i think it's it's um it's it's understanding what's important right now and uh having a little bit of flexibility on you know you, you can do all your goal setting and all of your the different areas health wealth family business etc etc but um and the intention is let's go and get, get it but that's like saying let's write a training program where we work in strength power endurance agility speed and mobility or you know toughness training mental strength whatever you want to call it and trying to tackle it all we wouldn't do that would we we would find a path to achieve that yeah no uh, yeah no and um and i think that's really what it boils down to is is like you've got all these ideas and all these plans but what is coming first what's going to make the biggest difference you know in nlp they call it which is the one that the difference that makes the difference what can you do that changes everything and um what's that sort of project that micro project that milestone that learning that you need that opens up everything else off the back of that so yeah it's cutting through the crap and getting to that bit yeah and 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 just toughen up steve mm. <laughs> mm. well but uh, no, it was it was great and uh, i i love that and i completely agree with it what you've just said there and and i think sometimes we are guilty of losing sight of that losing that perspective at times of like oh i'm doing this i'm doing that especially this time of year right when you're trying to start something and oh i'm going to up my training a little bit and stuff like that and then all of a sudden it's like two weeks in you're like i'm done in why oh i should be able to push on i've got no motivation it's like no you need need to take a step back and realize mm -hmm. that energy is finite and stuff so but uh, we're getting joined by lots of lovely people this morning, mate, which is great to see. Morning, so, everybody. Morning, Heather. There we go. Heather agrees with me. Meetings can be shattering. And she even yeah. had to have a sleep the other day. Um, she was mm -hmm. that tired. Sometimes it's needed. Power naps are the way nap. forward. Good nap. Can't be going the wrong. Yeah, they make caffeine naps are the way forward. They're, they're a lifesaver for me. So have a have a coffee or an espresso then go for a lie down and then mm. about 20 minutes the caffeine will get into your system and it'll yeah it's a good way to start but there you mm. go mm. so anyway a topic that i absolutely love chatting about and i know you do as well and it's um it's power training and yeah. so let's let's kind of let's kind of dig into it so kind of the forget strength let's build power and I don't know about yourself, mate, but I think I found myself in the uh, 
in the time of chasing kilos on the bar whilst trying to build maximal strength. Um, but I've just found out I, I've just become slower. I'm not aggressive under the bar as much as I used to be and stuff like that as well. So let's kind of chat into that little little blend of building power and stuff. And I think because there's a lot of context, I think a lot of people are going to be looking, well, what one you need one without the, you do. But there's a lot of context and there's a lot to unpack there. So first and foremost, mate, let's 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 dig into the, the context around power. When when do you sort of transition that maximal strength into the power um and everything else, mate? Yeah, so let's just let's just lay down some some key points here. So I think first and foremost, what what we're talking about with power is is explosiveness it's you know looking at the defining moments that typically win sporting contests such as breaking the line in rugby or you know finishing a fight in boxing and whatnot those things are typically definitive moments and bursts of explosive energy and power but bringing it right back to home Power is really relevant to general population too for things like slips, trips, and falls. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where the older population really struggle with with those sorts of things. They're just done. And there's not the explosiveness or the agility reflex to respond to those things. What we also know about, about the relationship between strength and power is that power and i'm encompassing speed agility and, and general explosiveness here steve but mm -hmm. those qualities power is lost really quickly it's very much a quality that if you don't use it you absolutely lose it yeah whereas strength you do lose strength but you lose it a lot slower than power mm. so power speed explosiveness training has to be in the program on a regular basis and in my eyes for everybody in some context now i'm not saying you're going to get 75 year old barbara doing you know snatches off the floor with her own body weight that's not the goal here it's relative to where they're at now and um the final point the key point here is strength and power relationship we know within reason the stronger you are the more power reserve you're going to have mm -hmm. so we're not saying forget strength let's build power in, in, in the way that the title suggests here we're saying for the discussion here we're going to look about look at power but actually strength lends itself to power very very uh, reliably they they are essentially a married couple of yeah that. Yeah, you can't have one without the other. You know? No, no. And um, and to your point, Steve, about when do you blend it to pass, I, I actually think most programs that and people that I work with will have a combination of both those qualities in there, um, be it maximal strength, basic strength, just strength training mm. and explosiveness training. So you might have... Your, well, you would normally have your power training at the start of the session and then you move into your strength training off the back of that. It doesn't have to be that way, but typically that's probably the, a good practice. Mm. So you know, for, for me, they, they intertwine logically on a weekly, fortnightly basis. You're going to touch both qualities. Mm. But generally speaking, I would say unless you're really a, a power lifter or somebody that is just pure strength ironic that they're called power lifters because it, it mm -hmm. is the strength you know it's probably a mistake to not have to not touch strength training and lifting heavy things and moving things fast and explosively on a weekly or fortnightly basis because you do need to keep them both mm -hmm. in program and as i say raising your strength will mean that you can train with faster lighter loads more and get better results won't it yeah yeah absolutely and 
I think where a lot of it gets lost in in well, not lost in translation and stuff. I think it's it's distilling down what type of power you also need, right? Because obviously we we say at the beginning everything's very context specific. So as we start to get closer to an event or there's a specific quality that you are looking to build with your athlete, you've got to decide what type of power or what type of power training, if you will, you're going to implement. So what is going to be best for your for your athletes? Mm. And this is why you come back to the, 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 the strength curve time and time again, because it makes sure that you're ticking the boxes and you're actually getting out. So obviously, ballistic movements, obviously, typically a movement will continue after that ballistic explosiveness has occurred. So if you think of like a med ball throw, the body keeps on moving as you've accelerated past the object and thrown it, et cetera, et cetera. But you also can build power by non-ballistic movements, i.e. your traditional squats, your presses, when you're just moving a bat yeah. as quick as you possibly can. So I think the key thing with all of the, the power chain is your understanding is when you're building out your progressions and your power training model, where are you going? The, the, the days of saying, well, we're going to do box jumps and jumps and all this kind of stuff because it's fast, so I .e. it must be power training, is just not the case. You're doing yourself a bit of a disservice there. You need to really dig down into the what type of power do we need to do? Does our athlete need to be able to produce power under load? So if you think of a grappler, they're not chucking a five kilo med ball off the chest, are they? They've got typically the weight of an opponent, which might be 70, 80 kilos. Yeah. So actually yeah. they need to train power with load, heavy load, because that's what the body's going to be required to do during that. So I think it's understanding what's the, the output that's needed for the athlete, but also where are you going with it? So having a really good understanding of your progressions and the end points really important. Yeah, I think I think when we look at power, we've got we've got to be a little bit mindful of the, the specificity trap mm. because um you know you take you take say a sprinter or a, a shot putter, you know, that the shot put's not a, a particularly heavy implement, discus mm. stroke, high jump. But when you look at the forces those guys experience running running up to, to jump and mm. driving through the floor, you know, there's there's multi multi body weight forces there. Yeah. So, you know, we need to replicate that in training. And um, and this is the classic trap where people get misled or um sort of fall into the kinematics and not thinking about the kinetics mm. you look at the discus throw and you think it's you know a light implement that rotates so the next minute you, you throw in med balls you know lateral med ball throws mm. they have their place absolutely have their place but you are absolutely underserving your client your athlete if you're not putting heavy load strength training in that program to mm. give them an accommodation towards six, eight, ten times body weight that will undoubtedly go through their their body. Mm. So when we look at power and when we look at any sports training, it's critical we look at both the kinematics and the movement patterns and the kinetics, the forces that that person or sport experiences yeah. so with that in mind you know ultimately speed training running throwing med balls is power training yes but um but so too are jump squats so too are trap bar jumps snatches olympic weightlifting and so too is squats deadlifts presses mm -hmm. and pulls the key thing that we hammer home steve on our programs and and in general, and it's an absolute critical coaching cue for any S and C coach to drive home in there in the people they work with is one word: intent. Mm. Intent to move the bar quickly, because mm. you're right. 
squats, deadlifts, whatever we want to use as a as a heavy load strength movement is power training, provided the intention to move that bar quickly exists. Mm. We can activate those high threshold motor units. Then we can tap into that neuromuscular system. And then we can actually get power and really good strength training adaptations off the back of that, can't we? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, and I think that's the, the, the key thing with it all, because if you look at what, what is power training, what's happening on a, a yeah. physiological level and a cellular level, it, it is all about that recruitment. So you've got that in your arsenal when your athlete goes to, to explode in their sport and you need to tap into that in the gym. And arguably, if you don't, it's you're actually putting your athlete at more risk. If you're not put, getting the t intent during the sessions, a gym, a gym session and a coaching session is actually a safe space of where you can learn to really maximally go at it 100 percent, you know, in a controlled environment. And by getting your athlete to experience that and understand that the body gets the adaptations there's less variables happening in terms of they might get tackled when they go into a sprint and all of these kinds of things. So then that transference effects does, does help massively, you know? So it's, um, it's a massive, massive topic. It's a massive subject. There's lots of variables, but I wouldn't, what I would say for coaches, it's easy to end up down a rabbit hole with that, but just make sure you've got your progressions in order and have a greater understanding of, what is strength? What is power? And yeah. what are those progressions? Because yeah, I think I think with 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 power training and the blend of strength training, I think if in doubt, it's always about. And if you if you want to go, if you want to train people in a rounded way, um, I think it's always going to be defaulting to surfing the curve, mm. where you've got heavy load strength training in there you've got explosive strength training so that's i would define that as still quite heavy loads but you're jumping you're moving so heavy jump squats cleans you've got max power in the middle there of lighter loaded so you could say cleans for cleans and snatches and max power stuff in there with not heavy loads and then you've got repetitive ballistic stuff in there med ball throws plyometrics and then you've actually got fully unloaded speed agility maximal effort training if you're hitting those qualities in there across a a two three week phase in some way you, you've got a good balance in your program there but see what are your thoughts on what do you see as the biggest mistakes coaches make with power training in general, do you think? So I think I think the biggest mistake is respecting the rest period. Mm. Because if you say, for example, I'm going through a hand clean protocol as it's starting to get into specific preparation and my, my volume of training in my sport specific stuff is increasing. So reducing some of the stuff. So I'm doing a lot of hand clean stuff. Um, when I'm on my kind of speed strength day, so loads that are, are really low, um, you recover really quick or aerobically you cover really quick. You do three reps and then you're like, I, I could go again. Yeah. But actually, that's not the, that's not what needed it's that maximal explosive moving that bar as quick as you possibly can and then giving your body sufficient rest because it's not just a it's a, it's a neural adaptation that you're trying to get as well it's not like the legs yeah. are going to be burning your forearms and your heart rate's going to be through the roof it's about yeah. pure recruitment and if you mm. don't respect the rest period enough and that's why sometimes i say to my athletes listen this this little block where we're emphasizing power training, still got our strength training in there, don't get me wrong, but the volume of sets and reps while we're yeah. doing our hand cleans or the power, gets a bit boring because you won't feel like you're working hard enough as such yeah. in terms yeah. of you won't be gassed. And you know when you've done a heavy strength set of squats, 
you kind of feel that, you know, it takes you about three, four minutes to recover. You put that on the power training, you don't get that feedback. You're like, I'm good to go again. And the mm. need to really respect the rest periods for me, because mm. that's when you notice velocity just really does drop very, very quickly. And you can't actually complete the session. And if, as Brendan said, if you're not getting the intent when you're doing power training, you're probably not doing power training or you're actually just doing a, a bastardized version of it, which is not going to lead yeah. to the adaptation you want. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, it's how often I've seen basically power training but it's really a metabolic circuit mm. you know and that's a trap that that's you, you we think that these movements are unloaded and um you know you pair them up you, you put them into a circuit and suddenly you're doing you know 30 seconds of med ball slams sprint up and down the gym some plyo push-ups and then box jumps and you know five minutes of that is not power training that's circuit yeah. training so um you know that that's not what we're talking about here there is a place for power endurance mm -hmm. and obviously metabolic training the training is not wrong no training is not wrong it's just the prescription of the training yeah. that's incorrect but no doubt about it respecting the work to rest ratios which you know depending on which which source you look at could be as high as 20 times work to rest but in reality yeah. that's not a lot if you do a set if, if you do a if you do some some plyometric bounding um it, you know that's it could literally be five to ten seconds of activity if that mm. so you know 20 times that so only it's, it's two or three minutes rest yeah. But the temptation is to turn around and do it again in on a 30 second because it's not hard enough. Yeah. But it's it's got to have quality to it as well. I think that's the other mistake, Steve, that I see a lot is the intent and the work to rest. But the other side of it is the quality of the movement has got to be there because yeah. you're not actually training the system the biomechanic movement pattern that you're looking for, you've got, unless the quality of the movement is there, the right muscles working at the right time in the right order, um, as soon as fatigue gets in, then the weakest link will will collapse and you, you find a way to compensate. The, the other mistake I think, I, I, I think is really, what I see a lot is, is getting too specific Mm. with with power training and and doing that too early and so you know big global power based movements explosive training generally speaking will always trump local basic um really finickety movements again there is a place for that but i i see you know weighted tennis rackets um boxers or combat athletes doing the punching you know it, it's sort of you sort of think like what what value are you really getting yeah. from that and, and as a coach again that those movements might fall into a box of engagement fun mm -hmm. so i'm not saying that again there's no bad exercises but it's unlikely they will fall into a power development box. It's more likely they'll fall into a, an athlete engagement box in my eyes, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's something I've, I've been challenging a lot of um, a lot of students with in terms of going back to what is the stimulus and the physiological change you are looking to make. And if you're saying, right, I want to, I want to build power and I want to want the athletes to be really explosive. So go back to well, what is explosive strength explosive strength is achieved with weights of kind of around about 75 80 percent of one rm you know it isn't happening with a weighted tennis bracket or a light no. implement you know if you want the athlete to be really explosive and to go a bit a lot like yeah. even further than that it's 
okay, well, my athlete needs to be able to sprint really well. Okay, well, what's what the determinants of that is? Ratio of force, rate of force development, and reduced ground contact time. So if we're looking at the first couple points there, it's the ratio of force and rate of force development. It's like, well, actually, I want my athlete to be able to produce a lot of force very quickly, rapidly, a lot of it. So they need to overcome a large amount of resistance to do it. If you want to train that physical quality outside of a sprint setting, if you want yeah. to work in making, I always look at the sport sits in the middle and we're looking at, the up the, the ceiling here and we're looking at the ground the base level here is we want to try and separate that down so the maximal strength which then leads itself to the power and surf and the curve raises so it trickles down so the athlete's got more pace to go and then we want to make sure their general physical qualities i.e the base health well-being flexibility all that is massive so then that supports everything they're doing in the sport as well so going back to those what is the stimulus I'm looking to make here? And if you're trying to build explosive strength or you want your athlete to be more explosive or produce these physical qualities that they need for the sport, then how are you getting that? And if you're using a box jump and if you're using a med ball slam, you know, when you're thinking that's going to do it, it's probably not. You're probably doing yourself a bit of a disservice or your athlete a bit of a disservice there. Agree. Yeah, you know. So, I think I think the key thing with it, guys, obviously, there's so much context to this, and me and Brenda could go back and forth all the time, and and we could probably stay on this call for another hour and come back full circle, and then say, yeah, but actually, there is a point when that's useful, and like Brendan says, it, it might tick the box there and it tick the box there. But if you are struggling with understanding strength and power training you want to get to grips with it I, I know i need to get my athletes lifting weights and and stuff and i need i know i need my athletes to get powerful for their sport but you're struggling how to break it down then watch out this weekend we have got a, a cpd sale going on and two of the products that we're going to give you access to now actually is 30 minutes before it launches we won't tell the marketing department that um, but basically, for the first 20 people, you can get 50% off the CPD. So we've got power training progressions and the strength and power coach bundle. So these are just fantastic resources uh, to go to. And we'll just unlock a lot for you if you are struggling to think about what does power training look like? What does that journey from starting at small, low level plyo? all the way into the heavy velocity based stuff as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to just drop the link in guys and I'm going to put a discount code on for you guys. Cause I want to give that to you, but uh, let's yeah. hope the marketing department are watching this Brendan. Cause I think they want this on email only, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I think while you do that, Steve, I think the, I think for me, what, what's really important as a coach is to have good frameworks and good structures to build your programs around. And as I mentioned, you know, there is literally no bad exercise. I'm sure somebody will challenge me. If you, if you think there's a bad exercise that nobody should ever do, type it in and let's, let's get your thoughts. But I'm sure I could find a way to say, to say that that might be practical, but um, it's having a framework and a decision-making process to take your clients and athletes on the right journey. And um, and really, well, that's what, what these products are. The, the Strength and Power Coach course is, is a genuine coaching course that brings your level of structural implementation of power training up. And the power training progressions add to that immeasurably with your training knowledge and um, and giving you more options to add into that structure. So they complement each other really, really well. Mm. And, um, and the people you're learning from are real, real world leaders. People like Dan Baker, who's influenced me a lot, president of the Australian Association and, you know, all round legend in, in the field of power training. So, you know, you want to, to have those structures in place 
and um, and ultimately that's what you can get off the back of this. Yeah, absolutely. And we go back to, I think it was a good few months back, we were talking about systems and coaching systems and having that in place. Um, so just adding to that and getting it, developing that even further, um, these resources will add to that. And, and power training progressions is, is probably a, a go-to resource still now, even after yeah. seeing it um many many times but it's still something i go to time and time again because it's a one it's a balance check but two sometimes you just start to see things through a different lens right you know in the beginning you might say all right i do this 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 and this but as you had more context you start working with different athletes in different environments you start to go back and go oh hang on that's why that's going to transfer a lot better to this person now or that's why i'm possibly won't stick the person on that path and I'll keep them on this path, you know, and that's really, really important as well. So really do check those out guys. Cause uh, it's, a, it's fa fantastic resources to go to time and time again. But like I say, it is only for the first 20 customers only. So if you are struggling now, guys, just make that bit of commitment back yourself and, and go and grab them. Uh, Cause there'll be massive things for your toolbox for sure. You know, and that last little thing I always want to touch, pick your brains about Brendan because I, I, in terms of power training is that power endurance we talked about it before in terms of that that circuit and that metabolic thing and I think that's where power endurance is such an interesting one because it you need that metabolic stress and when does it so what's your favorite way of measuring power endurance in terms of a session if you want to say right I want to build power endurance I think the key thing for yeah. me is you've got to be able to measure it. So have you got any examples that you've used in the past for, for measuring those? Tons, yeah. I mean, I, I, power endurance is is probably worth doing a session on itself, really, because it, it's a big, big area. Hmm. And, um, and it's an important area as well. So let's do the full session. But, but yeah, you know, power endurance is not 40 minutes of power, you know, if power is five seconds, power endurance might be 10 seconds. But um, it some simple ways would be things like hurdle hops, how many hurdle hops you can, lateral hurdle hops you can do, say, in 20 seconds. How many uh, bench presses with 50% of your body weight you can do, you know, in 10 seconds. And, um, and you can be as creative as you... As you, your limit to your creativity when it comes to, to power endurance and also looking at the sport to see mm -hmm. what is relevant for that sport because power endurance really does get um, sort of more specific by nature. Mm -hmm. Power endurance for, for mixed martial arts is very different to power endurance for tennis. Mm -hmm. But um, some, some, so, so there's a couple of examples there. I think... I've, I've always used heavy, medium, light triceps quite successfully. They're quite competitive. You can you can create a, a tricep, for example, five cleans with, you know, 80% of your max on there into um, five box, uh, sorry, five uh, jump squats and then into five box jumps, for example. You know, and you can set a timer on that, get your, get your group doing it, and they go through that. And really, really nice that, because ultimately you're, you're, you're doing 30, 40 seconds of activity there, but um, it's all power-based movement. And, yeah. um, and, and this is where it's dangerous, you see, because you could, you could look at that and say, well, that's, you know, if you did that over and over and over, it's a metabolic circuit, and it is. It yeah. is. But the there is a, a process behind this. Mm. And, um, and it even, even five sets of five cleans is power endurance, mm. you know, done in the right context. If, if you said, if you, if you do five sets of five cleans, let's say, let's take an arbitrary weight, 100 kilograms or 50 kilograms, and the weight stays the same, and you, your rest period in that is three minutes, and then next week, you do that for four weeks. And then next week, you, you cut the rest period hmm. 90 seconds. 
that's power endurance. But it's different to a heavy, medium, light tricep. It's yeah. different to a 20-second repetitive interval. And ultimately, what you're trying to do is move closer to the end position of what the sport looks like. Yeah. So I think it's it's well worth the follow-up on power endurance training, building your power endurance program. Because on the face of it, it may well look like some kind of CrossFit session mm. if you judge it on one session. But it, you, you should never judge a program on one session. That's like looking no. at a photo and saying, that's not, I don't like the photo. You need to see the video, which mm. is the time frame. So... Yeah, big area that one. Yeah, it is. It is, and I'm looking forward to getting stuck into that. Um, I think, I think the last point you made there, um, there's there was some real strange stuff happening on social media. Well, there's always strange stuff happening on social media, but there's quite a lot of people getting high-profile coaches calling people out during a whiteboard session or a picture of a whiteboard session you know saying it was a terrible program and all of that and it's like guys if you find yourself judging a coach through a snapshot a training video um a session that they've posted or whatever it may be then you need to take a step back and just say because on the surface it does look, might look rubbish and this is a tangent by the way might look rubbish but remember coaches do things in in context there's always something that's preceded and there's always something come off the back of it. So if you ever look at social media, go, that's terrible. That's the worst thing. And I'm just, just stop yourself right there. And remember I could walk into the gym while you're coaching someone and going, that is awful. But you would then explain to me and say, actually, well, we've done this, 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 and this, and this is where it's led up to. So a little tangent there. I just wanted to get that in while you uh, you touched on that little bit there as well anyway. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> so, guys, we're going to sort of change tact a little bit now. So let's – let's uh, let's – we're going to – last week we talked about goal setting and Brendan was doing his goal setting after it and I'd done mine previously and stuff like that. So what we're going to kind of chat about now is what comes next because – Goal setting itself is a very, very, it's a big task. It's a, it's a worthwhile task it needs doing. But I think what a lot of people do, I've been guilty of it in the past, is do it and then it goes into a book and then goes at the back of the cupboard or down the side and stuff like that. So what's the action sets that you have once you've, you've done your goal setting, mate? Because obviously these are mammoth sessions, right? And lots of stuff comes off the back of it. But what's, the, what's your go-to to make sure right, I'm going to get these goals smashed. So I, I, like to, I like to properly write what I've done up into something and, um, you know, PowerPoint slide or something like that so that I've got something to refer to. Mm. And I do recommend that, whatever that looks like for you guys listening here, when you're writing up your goals or when you're doing your goals, Create something that you can refer to at the end. So don't leave it on the whiteboard. And even, to be honest, even taking a photo of the whiteboard is not great for me. Like, it's it's important. You, you want to take a photo, for example, but how often do you look back at photos? And I think there is a process then in taking what you've done on the whiteboard and writing it up into something you, you kind of own that a little bit more for me. Mm. You, you know exactly what you've done. You think through how taking it from a whiteboard or taking it from a piece of paper that you've just got, gone gone nuts on, like that dis, distilling that down into something that is meaningful to you is a good first step. Mm. And then for me off the back of that, it's then the last the last part of your goals is, what am I doing now? What what does the next 30, 60, 90 days look like? So you might have, re let's say you've done your goals in January. You've recalibrated your, say, your five-year plan. You've, you've, had a, you've had a 2021, doesn't matter what it looks like, good, bad, indifferent, doesn't matter. But now you've, it's cast a light on the next five years and you're thinking, now I want, I want a mega yacht in five years or I literally just want, to have a, a fully booked client base in 
a certain amount of time. It doesn't doesn't matter at all. What that means is then you can break that down and your 30, 60, 90 day project is very simply a question of what do I need to do to move towards that goal now? What is going to move that forward? And it's the difference that makes the difference. You know, you might have loads of things on there, but what is the one or very few things that I need to do right now to move that forward in the next 30 days? Mm. And for me, Steve, this is all about simplicity and making it brutally achievable that first 30, 60, 90 days. You cannot miss that one. So mm. even if even if you're already posting on social media three times a week at the moment, maybe that goal should be to continue to post three times a week. It shouldn't be to double it or triple it. It just is, I want to continue that momentum. And you need to win that first 30, 60, 90 days in some way. Yeah. And really what we're talking about here is habits. It's yeah. habit formation. But the habits will always fail if the clarity of your goal is not clear. Clarity yeah. is a habit. Clarity yeah. is the key habit here. And then your actual daily habits will fall out of that. So I, I think for me, it's it's making that first hurdle so low that you will step over that successfully with your eyes shut, frankly. Yeah. And that's that's the game. If you set that hurdle too high, you you don't step over it, and then you don't go any further, do you? You know. No, no and I think that's it. That's the key thing. I think it's distilling it down so you've got your your vision, and your big vision should be something that you really want, and it stirs some uh, inspiration and challenge, and gets that curiosity flowing, and. You should be excited by your goal. If something's not ex exciting, you're probably not going to work hard to get to it. But rather than just saying, right, that's what I want to achieve, and then not having anything else working towards that, that's where things start to fall down. So I think it's, it's exactly what Brenda says. You've got your big vision of what you, whatever it is that you're trying to do. Then off the back of it, it's the smaller objectives come out the back of it. You know, and when you've done goal setting, and this is why we, we talked about it quite a lot last week, is this is why you've got to spend some time because clear goal, like a, a clear objective will probably give you the roadmap to how you need to do it anyway. So if you're really specific, it's challenging and inspiration, uh, inspirational. Uh, there's, there's time on it and it ticks all of the boxes to smart goals if you want to look at that, et cetera, et cetera. And it's all part of that vision. It'll it'll give you probably 80% of a roadmap of how to get there. So I was chatting about this last night. So say if I want to take 1.7 kilo uh, body weight squat, sorry. So it's one. I'm currently at 1.7 times body weight. I don't want to get to two times body weight by the end of the year. I've set the time. It's inspiration. I was like, actually, double body weight is something that I really want to get to. It, it kind of writes a roadmap anyway. So I think with all of that, it's you've got your goals, look at the objectives, and then just still distill them down into those 30, 60, 90 day pieces. But whilst you're doing that, forget the how for a time being, just spend some time on the strategy. What do I need to build in? And I think that's that's something that I always look into there. We've gone through the vision, gone through the dreams and everything else, what I want to achieve. Then the objectives fall out the back end of it. And again, you make it super, super simple. Some objectives might take you seven days and it might, or it might be a day. An objective, what you need to get set up might be a day, you know? And it might yeah. be something is, right, I want to build an e-commerce online marketing business or online coaching. One of the objectives, part of your strategy is, I want to get a new email marketing software. So your objective is, sign up to the best one for you. Yeah. It's, it's simple as that, isn't it? You know, that's the first step and that's a win. And then the more you win, the more you build your confidence and the more it starts to settle in. And, and like you say, it becomes a habit. Winning is a habit, just as losing losing is a habit. So we need to make sure that we're constantly constantly winning and building that as well. So that's so the, kind of the way that I look at it as well, mate. Yeah, I think so. And, um, 
yeah, those those steps are are really as the, the simplicity of this is the key. And if you're if you set a goal that say the two times body weight squat, you know that's 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 a really clear goal, isn't it? You either succeed in that or you don't. And say if you want to be able to do that in 2022, you know, you, you, you don't, if you do it on January 1st, you haven't hit that goal, but I wouldn't sort of call it a failure. So, but the point here is that that's a really clear goal. And from that, you can then create other process-based goals to mm-hmm. achieve that, such as, well, I'm not going to do that if I don't get in the gym. So mm-hmm. I need to... I need to train three times a week or you know, I need to average 12 sessions a month or something like that. And I need to be training in and around my current 80%, moving that up, blah, 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 blah. On other areas of life, such as growing your business, that's the level of clarity that you need on the goal there. What is your two times body weight squat in your business? It can't just be... I need I need to make more money because how much more is going to work for you? So again, get that number on it. If it's a grand a month, two grand a month, what, what it doesn't matter what it is because the point here is what we really need to get to is so what leads to two grand a month then? How many clients is that? What would my fee structure be for that? And when you start thinking in that way, really what you're doing is just you're writing a business plan there, just like you're writing a training plan. And um, and so at the start, I talked about get it written down into some kind of working document. You might, but you, you need to you need to keep going back to that. And that, yeah. that ultimately is your, your business plan or the start of it. Yeah. Because then you can sort of say, well, actually, if I charge 25 quid a session, then it's this many hours a week that I need to work. But if I charge 40 quid a session, it's this. So what do I need to do to charge 40? And you can start really having those smart conversations either with yourself or with somebody that you trust. Yeah. And um, and ultimately then you can say, well, if I, if I need four, uh, 10 40 quid sessions a week, then that's four clients, an average of four clients. And to get four clients, I need to then speak to 12 people, you know? How am I going to speak to those 12 people? And who will those 12 people be? Mm. How am I going to speak to them? What am I going to say? You know, I need an offer. And that that's every everything of this. Like, it, there's lots of little mini things. But as you said, Steve, some of this, you, you do it less than a day, 20 minutes. Yeah. Make a decision, you know? Mm. Yeah. And then you go back to that document later. You say, well, actually, no, I, I am I'm happy with, I would rather do it in small groups where they pay me 20 quid on average than one-to-one where they pay me 40 quid or 50 quid, for example. I just keep, you know, you, you, you have, all of us here watching this, we, we are absolutely in control of our own outcomes here. So mm. just try different stuff. But yeah. The bottom line is, when you distill this down, let's go back to the training one for a second. Two times body weight squat. We know we have to lift heavy weights regularly to get that. That is really the crux of this. Whether we're pushing and pulling, we're doing posterior chain, knee dominant, hip dominant. It you know ultimately it falls into the mantra of we must lift heavy stuff regularly. If you want to sign up more clients, the mantra is very simple is I need to speak with people regularly to to position my services to them. I need to be in contact with human beings regularly to do that in person, online, doesn't matter. But don't kid yourself and, and complexify it to a point that you actually do absolutely nothing. You've got to have that. What is that mantra for growth here? You know, if you want to have a better relationship with somebody in your life, then your mantra would probably be, I need to create time for this person every week. 
You know, yeah. it's not that difficult. Whether you go out to Pizza Express or whether you sit in and have a coffee is irrelevant if there's no time carved out. Do you know what I mean, Steve, on that? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think it, it leads on to like the final bit, guys. Obviously, appreciate we don't want to take up too much of your time, but we, it's something really powerful, and it's something that you've said to me time and time again. Um, when she, once you've done your goals, once you've got your objectives, and once everything's come out of the back end of it, it's... Like Brendan says, it's what's going to get you to the two thousand pound. Is it raising your prices? Is it adding more clients? What's going to get you to the two times body weight squat? Is it more frequency in the gym? Do you just need to bust through some plateaus? How are you going to do that? Because ultimately, when you set goals, you've got to reflect on well, what have I done so far to get us there? And this saying here is what got you here won't get you there necessarily. Because if you find yourself in a position where I've been stuck on 1.7 times body weight squat and you don't change anything, why would you expect a different outcome? And if you have currently sat on £2,000 a month income from your coaching and you don't change your offering, you don't change your marketing approach, you don't change your, your working habits, why would you expect anything different? You know, it's definition of insanity, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. So sometimes when you've got to look at that, you've got to look at the gaps and go, right, actually, that was great. It served me really, really well. And it's got me to this position now, which yeah. is good. But I need to understand what's going to get me there. How am I going to bridge the gap of, right, this is where I need to be now. This is my goals. What am I going to do to get there? Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that key point with this is actually being honest with yourself on what that goal is. Because if you play down your goals and you're not actually up for it or you're not prepared to, to sort of see it really and accept it, then nothing will change, will it? Because you just crack on doing the same as you've always done. So won't get you there. Well, what is there? What's the honesty of that? And um, I think you've got to, first and foremost here, you've got to have the courage to, to set the goal that you really want before you, you start thinking about how you're going to get there. So there's an honesty and a courage piece here to really think about this. But um, but like I think we touched on this last week. I think I think the key thing for me with that is thinking about if everything goes to plan, where could you be in five years, for argument's sake, from now? So, you know, if you if you launch your business and it really works, and then something else happens, you, you know, you, you maybe you want to get another one, you want to open up another gym, and that really works realistically what could that look like in five years where where might you be if everything goes to plan with your health and fitness what what would that look like what could you achieve in that realm so i do think that um, there's lots and lots of really really relevant parts here that come back from being honest with yourself and having the courage to actually set the right goal for you. And um, and then you're absolutely right. Then it's like, well, what, what behaviors, what approach to life will get me there? Because, you know, I'm not right, I'm not there right now, ultimately, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I had to mute myself there because the guys, the dogs were going absolutely mental. But uh, but no, it is it is once you have that honesty of understanding where, where you're going. And acceptance. Sometimes you've got to accept that you're just not good enough to get to where you where you want to be right now, like where you want to go. Sorry, you just don't have the skill set, or you don't have enough knowledge to move the needle. And that's sometimes difficult. It's tough to say, actually, I'm not good enough yet. It's having that yet on the end of it. Because the thing is, is if if you did have all of the skill set, you did have all of the knowledge, you'd already be there, right? 
So when you're setting your goals, it goes back to these should be challenging. They should be inspirational because if they're not, you're already there. You're not going to work yeah. to something that you've already got. Do you know, you don't, you're not going to work to say, right, I'm, Brendan, you like watches and you like cars and stuff like that. But you're not going to say, right, I'm going to work really hard so I can trade in my car to get exactly the same car back. Mm. You know, it's mm. like, no, I want like a better car. So I'm going to have to yeah. push myself and raise my standards to get there. So when you have those knowledge gaps, it, it all starts with you. You've got to have those uncomfortable conversations and understand where the gaps are because if you don't have that how will you know what you need to work on you know yeah it, that's it, a good it, point it's it's um the any any step change that you you want to have in and in introduce you into your life without whatever area of your life it is be it you want to double your body what double your squat you want to generate lots more clients requires this equation here in front of you to be solved what got you here won't get you there and it, it looks at what behaviors and things do you need to leave behind now and what's actually served you quite well and you need to keep hold of them and that reconciling that equation is is the answer mm. but it really does start with where you want to be because I, I agree with you on your point about you're not good you, you might not be good enough but i think behind that is do you actually want it enough mm. to get good at it you know yeah. like um and, and and are you driven enough is it important enough to you and uh, and so it's finding that that's critical here it's finding what, what is it what is it that you really want and what's just going to make a big difference to you and it doesn't have to be some sort of life-changing mission it could literally just be i just could do with another grand a month in my bank account or yeah. i would just like to be working with more athletic clients than less athletic clients for argument's sake it doesn't yeah. need to be an all singing all dancing mission steve does it no, no, not at all, not at all, not at all, and and that's the beauty of everything we do. It's like train, like go back to training time because it's all scalable, right? It's all depending on where you are. You've got your level one exercises, and you've got your level ten exercises. Every exercise has got its own merit. It's just right for the individual, you know. Brendan's goals and visions are going to look a lot different to mine. Mine are going to look a lot different to somebody just starting out in the fitness industry. There's no right or wrong. It's whatever suits you. So. Yeah. If, if you are wanting to, to get stuck into building better habits this year, guys, and looking at enhancing your communication skills and your coaching skills, and you feel like that's where one of your gaps are, as part of this weekend's flash sale, find a little product just to go with the power training ones. Is we've got the It Starts With You bundle. Now, this is made up of um, a fantastic workshop. I actually attended myself. And... Uh, it stays with me because I made myself look like an absolute prat on that one. Completely missed the point of an exercise that we were doing, you know. But that it was a great learning process. But that's called it's it's about effective coaching, and it's a really really fantastic um, event that kind of kickstarted my coaching development and stuff. So it's it's something that's really really powerful. So I'd recommend checking that out. And there's some uh, building better habits uh presentation in there which is great we'll just give you eyes on what it is exactly that you need to do so guys again the first 20 customers only on the it starts with you the power training progressions um and the strength and power coach use the code flash 50 you'll get 50 percent off the first 20 20 customers only guys um i'm going to drop the the link in now for the it starts with you if guys you're watching this and you're on the go and or you're watching this and you've just got the sound on in the background in the car and stuff like that and you don't you don't get chance to get the link anybody who's watching this and isn't part of the first 20 or gets knocked back for it drop me drop us an email stee at strengthconditioneducation.com and i'll get that sorted for you okay guys so have a look in the chat box guys have a look at the products get stuck into it use flash 50 and you get 50 percent off those guys okay so Mate, we, I think we've covered a lot there. And Ooh. I think it's got to be about 
five different ECLs, which will come off the back of what we've uh, chatted about, right? I think uh, we've got power endurance in there. We've got doing your roadmap, goal setting even more so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think we've got it. Guys, drop in the comments. What would you like us to discuss next week or in the next coming ones and stuff? It'd be yeah, really good. Yeah, definitely do that. And um, and if you want to come on a show or if you've got questions, if you've got a challenge, let us know because, you know, these sessions are to serve you guys and help make you get where you want to be. So, yeah, give us what we need to help you. Absolutely. So on that, guys... Go out there, use what we've discussed today. Go make it happen. Implement it in your day-to-day -day lives within your coaching business, your coaching sessions. As always, if you need anything, please do reach out to us. Reach out to me and the uh, the Elite Coach Mentorship. Reach out on the Elite Coach Network as well, which is a, a, a thriving community of coaches. So if you just want to start getting surrounded by other like-minded coaches who are keen to progress themselves then get yourself over into the elite coach network so until next time guys have a, a fantastic weekend i'm looking forward to uh seeing all of the quick wins that everybody's having over the next seven days brendan been a pleasure as always mate and we'll catch up again uh in the, in the coming days as well mate thanks have everyone a great day.